Hey everybody, Liz here. I'm a farmer and I help coordinate some of SARE's grants here in the North Central region. And one question we get a lot is about money, the practical realities of if I receive this SARE grant that I'm applying for, how's it going to work in terms of cash flow and um, receiving my grant funds? I think of the SARE grants here in the North Central region in two separate groups. First, you've got the graduate student, partnership, professional development, and research and education grants. Those are usually awarded to nonprofits, universities, or other community groups. For those four programs, you are actually reimbursed for your expenses as you go. You submit monthly or quarterly invoices to SARE and the University of Minnesota as you spend the funds. Whereas for the farmer, rancher, and youth educator grants, you actually receive a portion of the funds up front so that you can get the work started and then you see, receive the rest as you submit progress and final reports and show your good progress. The rest of this video is going to focus on farmer, rancher, and youth educator grants because those folks don't apply for grants nearly as often. And if you're new to grant writing, this next part is especially important. First, let's clarify that SARE grants are not free money. The idea is to get money into the hands of farmers, ranchers, and educators who are doing innovative things that push sustainable farming forward. And the grants help them test or demonstrate their ideas and then share out what they learn to their peers. This money is essentially a fee for service. You're providing a service. You're doing on-farm research. You're demonstrating best practices on your ranch. You're trialing curriculum with your students or other youth. Now, SARE grant funding should not be how you fund the day-to-day -day operations of your farm, but it could help you test out an innovative idea and provide some cushion while you're trialing. Farmers aren't really used to receiving grants. So let's look at these three options for how you might fund your farm or ranch um, as part of your work, right? You're going to have sales, the things you're selling on your farm or the services you're providing, but uh, you might also need some capital. And so that could come in the form of a grant, a loan, or cost share. Um, with a grant, you don't pay it back. Um, with a loan, you definitely do, right? And with interest. And then a cost share is uh, sort of a different category altogether. A cost share, a good example of a cost share is the EQIP program from the Natural Resources Conservation Service, where, you know, the, putting, uh, the cost of putting up a high tunnel might be uh, $8,000 or $16,000, the federal government's going to pay a portion of that and you're going to pay the rest. So they're sharing the cost. One thing that differentiates these three too is, is there a reimbursement? Meaning, do you get the money up front or do they only give you the money if you carry out the service uh, or complete the project? So um, with a lot of grants, they're reimbursements. You're not going to get all the money up front. You're going to have to do the work and then get the money. And that's a big deal because you need to know if you have the cash flow to do it that way. Okay, let's think about how the reality of the reimbursement structure can inform how you write your proposal and what you plan to do during your farmer rancher grant or your youth educator grant. The amount of money you get up front depends on the program. For farmer rancher grant, it's 50% of the grant funds. And for youth educator grant, it's 75% of the grant funds. You get the rest as the project unfolds and you submit your progress reports and final reports. That means that you're going to get some of the money uh, at the start because you've already written your proposal. That counts as your plan of work. And so we can give you a portion of the money at the start. And once you see how much you're going to get up at the start, um, that's going to help you figure out what you can afford to do in the first, say, year of the project. And one last important note on the financial front. If you are applying for a farmer rancher grant, note that these grants are like any money you make on your farm. They are taxable income. You will receive a 1099 showing the grant income for each year of the grant. And I really encourage you to talk to your tax professional about how receiving a SARE grant will impact your tax reality and how it will balance with expenses. And note that if you're a farmer applying for a youth educator grant, the same might be true. Talk with your tax professional to think through how grant funds will affect you. All right, that's how SARE grants work in terms of cash flow and reimbursements. Be in touch when you have questions. That's what we're here for.